This is a recorded presentation for the Pacheco Reservoir Expansion Project provided in advance of the public scoping meetings scheduled for February 24th and 25th, 2021. The Pacheco Reservoir Expansion Project is being developed by Valley Water with its partners, the San Benito County Water District and the Pacheco Pass Water District. The first segment of this presentation will cover the California Environmental Quality Act, known as CEQA, process and the purpose of the scoping meeting. The items shown in blue summarize the steps in the CEQA process. The initial study and notice of preparation were released in August 2017, just before the Water Storage Investment Program funding application. The first green box indicates where the project currently stands as the team is beginning to prepare the Draft Environmental Impact Report, or EIR. The second green box notes the actions the team will undertake after public comment on the draft EIR in preparation for the final EIR that is slated for completion in 2023. The purpose of the scoping meeting at this stage is to provide a public update on the project status, provide an opportunity to receive additional public and agency input, and specifically receive input for the scope and content of the EIR as we begin preparing the draft to be released to the public in 2021. The next segment of this presentation will cover the background of the project. The existing dam on the North Fork of Pacheco Creek forms Pacheco Reservoir just north of Pacheco Pass Highway or State Route 152. The approximately 100 foot tall dam was built in 1939 and impounds up to 5,500 acre feet of water. Pacheco Pass Water District owns and operates the dam and releases water stored in the reservoir into Pacheco Creek to recharge the downstream groundwater aquifers. The groundwater is then pumped to the surface through wells for agricultural use. It is important to note the existing reservoir facility only has the ability to directly divert water into the creek and has no other conveyance facility, such as a pipeline connection to a water system. There have been many historical evaluations related to the Pacheco Reservoir, the most relevant to the current project dating back to the 1990s. California's Proposition 1 of 2014 dedicated $2.7 billion for investments in water storage projects. The Pacheco Reservoir Expansion Project's 2017 application for this water storage investment program scored highest out of the eight projects that received eligibility for conditional funding administered by the California Water Commission. The Pacheco Reservoir Expansion Project is related to a project called the San Luis Low Point Improvement Project being pursued by the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation. The San Luis Reservoir provides storage for both state and federal water contractors. Valley Water imports about 45% of its annual water supply from San Luis Reservoir through a pumping plant and pipeline called the Pacheco Conduit. In dry years, when the reservoir reaches low levels, the intakes for the pumping plant begin to pull in poor quality water near the surface, and the water level can even drop below the intakes to the pumping plant. The San Luis Low Point Improvement Project intends to resolve this issue, and the Pacheco Reservoir Expansion Project is one of the five action alternatives identified as a solution. In addition to helping solve the low point problem, the Pacheco Reservoir Expansion Project offers emergency water supply and improves habitat for steelhead in Pacheco Creek. These two efforts can come together as a nexus project that can solve an array of deficiencies. This next segment will describe where the project is located and why it provides a unique opportunity to meet multiple objectives. The Pacheco Reservoir is situated in Southeast Santa Clara County, just off State Route 152, or Pacheco Pass Highway, about 30 minutes east of Gilroy. San Luis Reservoir is located about eight miles east of the Pacheco Reservoir. 
After water from the current Pacheco Reservoir is released in Pacheco Creek, it travels about 17 miles to San Felipe Lake before it makes its way into the Pajaro River. As we face future climate change, potential multi-year droughts, and water supply outages due to earthquakes or other disasters, Valley Water recognizes a need to develop solutions to these emergencies. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Admin Administration Office of Marine Fisheries has identified the South Central California Coast Steelhead as a federally threatened species. The Pajaro River watershed that includes Pacheco Creek has been identified as a critical recovery domain needed for these fish. The primary objectives of the project are to meet the needs previously described. While the primary objectives are considered to have equal importance, the secondary objectives will be pursued to the extent possible without adversely affecting the primary objectives. Project alternatives will be described in the following segment. The project team is looking at various alternatives, including a no project alternative. These alternatives have been formed by investigations, analysis, and coordination with stakeholders and regulatory agencies. All the action alternatives include a new dam upstream of the existing dam, expanded reservoir and related facilities, a connection to the existing Pacheco conduit that allows water from San Luis Reservoir to be pumped into the expanded reservoir and stored until it's released, decommissioning and removal of the existing dam along with restoration of the channel between the sites for the new dam, roadway improvements, power transmission upgrades, and construction material borrow source stockpiling and staging areas. The variations between the action alternatives include two different dam sites, two reservoir sizes, and two dam types. The alternatives also include variations of the operations after construction. The team has explored two dam sites referred to as the upstream and downstream sites. The figure shows the distance relative to Highway 152 and the existing dam. You can see the upstream site would allow for a greater amount of channel restoration between it and the existing dam, which would be new habitat for steelhead and other species. Two reservoir sizes are being considered as part of the analysis a 140,000 acre foot reservoir at each site and a 96,000 acre foot reservoir at the upstream site. Two different dam types are being considered in the alternatives. Hard fill, which is a newer technology using rock materials from the site that are mixed with cement and compacted. The strength of the material allows for steeper slopes on the dam faces and a smaller footprint. The emergency spillway and inlet outlet pipelines can be integrated into the hard fill dam structure, allowing reservoir overflows to spill over the body of the dam through a channel. The zoned earth fill dam is similar to Valley Water's existing dams that would require separate construction work areas for the spillway and inlet outlet pipelines. The long-term operations variations in the alternatives include two flow target scenarios for releases into Pacheco Creek. The original target flow identified for the Water Storage Investment Program application in 2017 and the refined target flows developed over the past few years with input from state and federal resource agencies and consideration of water year type. There are also two different participation scenarios in the alternatives for comparison. A scenario without project participation from San Benito County Water District, and another with 10%, which is their maximum anticipated participation. San Benito County Water District is a key partner for this project since their system also directly connects to the Pacheco conduit that delivers imported water from San Luis Reservoir. 
This is a summary of the preliminary range of alternatives to be assessed in the draft EIR, which will include a no project alternative. Preliminary alternative number one represents the original project presented in the initial study and the 2017 water storage investment program application. While the other alternatives have one or more variations to the original project, which will be covered in greater detail on the subsequent slides. This is a bird's eye view of the expanded reservoir area in blue and a close up of the new dam and related facilities for alternative number one. The reddish brown area represents the dam footprint. The green lines show the arrangement of the new pipelines and pump station to deliver water in and out of the expanded reservoir. The emergency spillway will be located in the brown area. The yellow lines show the roads to access the site and new facilities. And the red lines represent the proposed power transmission line alignment. Alternative number two replaces the Earthfield Dam with the Hardfield Dam at the downstream site. As mentioned, this integrates the spillway into the body of the dam, as well as the inlet outlet pipeline arrangement, which significantly reduces the area of ground disturbance. Alternative number three moves the Earthfield Dam to the upstream site. The preliminary design utilizes a natural slope over the west abutment for the emergency spillway, which is a favorable characteristic of the site when compared to the Earthfield Dam at the downstream site. Alternative number four has two variations from the original concept with the Hardfield Dam located at the upstream site. As compared to the previous alternative at the upstream site, the Hardfield Dam allows a much smaller construction footprint with the spillway and pipeline arrangement integrated within the body of the dam. The last action alternative to be assessed in the EIR is a smaller Earthfield Dam at the upstream site with a reservoir size of 96,000 acre feet. In this next segment, we will review the project impacts to be assessed in the EIR. The activities of the project and effects can be broken down into three areas the reservoir and work areas that would be directly affected by construction activities and inundation within the expanded reservoir, downstream areas that would be affected by the changes in water flow release, and water service areas that would be affected by changes in water storage and deliveries. Impacts to the physical environments to be assessed include aesthetics, agricultural and forestry resources, air quality, energy, geology and soils, greenhouse gas emissions, hazards and hazardous materials, hydrology and water quality, mineral resources, and wildfire. Impacts to biological resources to be assessed include botanical resources, fisheries and aquatic resources, and terrestrial and other wildlife resources. Impacts to the human environment to be assessed include land use and planning, noise, population and housing, transportation and traffic, public services, utilities and service systems, and recreation. Impacts to cultural resources to be assessed include anything with historic or prehistoric importance. And impacts to tribal cultural resources to be assessed include sites, places, cultural landscapes, features, sacred places, and objects with cultural value to Native American tribes. The last segment of this presentation will describe the process for the additional scoping comment period. One of the primary purposes of the virtual scoping meeting is to solicit input from the public and agencies on the information to be included in the draft EIR. Input may be provided for the range of alternatives, the environmental impacts, 
and potential mitigation measures. We would like to receive comments by March 12, 2021 to allow time to consider them as we prepare the draft EIR. In order to be considered, comments must be written and emailed to pachecoexpansion at valleywater.org or mailed to Santa Clara Valley Water District, attention Todd Sexauer at 5750 Omblin Expressway, San Jose, California 95118. For additional information, please explore our project page on valleywater.org backslash Pacheco Expansion. Questions can also be emailed to pachecoexpansion at valleywater.org. Thank you for your time.